Hi and welcome back to the channel. Today I thought I'd showcase my British Expeditionary Force for the fall of France 1940. But before I do, I thought we would sort of go through some of the likes and dislikes um, that was obviously asked by Johnny Watson's channel um, uh, just the community what we, what we liked and disliked. So, what is my likes and dislikes? Well, I think by and large, what the community, what you guys have all said, I've watched all your videos, yeah, I totally agree. You know, we are all singing from, I think, from the same hymn sheet on, on most of it. Um, dislikes for me has got to be, ever si it's got to be poorly fitting um, plastic miniatures, uh, especially historical ones. Ever since we break down in 2016, which I've spoken about briefly before, um, I find any form of modelling a struggle. And, that, and that's, um, if you see what I used to do before and what I do now, is it's chalk and cheese. Um, so to me, having miniatures that, 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 especially the arms that don't fit right to the weapon, etc., they all look like they're sort of deformed. They look like if, if they fired the gun, the stock of the rifle would come back and take their chin out. Like you know, it's one of those sort of things. They just don't look right. <laughs> it just doesn't look right. Um, I don't understand why in this day and age that, that companies can produce better fitting miniatures, um, but more importantly better instructions. So what set of arms fits what body? It is, I have seen some more recently where it is getting better, um, but I still think there's still a lot out there that, that, that's not not in that vein. But that's just a personal thing for me. You guys, obviously, you, you might find that a lot easier than what I do, but you know, for someone who, who struggles with it, it's a nightmare. And uh, so, so that's that for me. Um, likes. Community, I think the community here, I think everyone I've met on here um, has been absolutely brilliant. Um, really enjoyed what you're doing. I hope you're enjoying what we're doing. And I think, you know, I think we are learning and sharing ideas and, and sort of picking, and I say learning off of each other, really, um, which I think is a positive. Um, and I really do like that. And I think YouTube is certainly, along with Facebook and other mediums, blogs, etc., I think we are becoming also more open. Uh, our hobby, our hobby, you know, it's open out there. We're bringing, I think, people from the video game market into the hobby, um, and not as we feared, going the opposite way. So again, that's healthy for our hobby to grow in the future, and that stands testament to to what it can offer and what it can bring other people. Um, so that's great, um, and I also like to see a good mix of younger generation, male, female, every. I like to see everybody playing because. You know, at the end of the day, after all said and done, it's a game. You know, whether it's historical, whether it's fantasy, sci-fi, whatever, it's a bloody game. You know, let's have fun. Let's just enjoy what we do and have a laugh, and and create that social element. To me, war gaming is about being social. You know, it should be a social hobby because we need people to play. Yes, you can play solo, obviously. You know, I'm not and there's a lot of people out there that do. I mean, I've played a few solo games and that and enjoyed myself as well. Like. It's funny, isn't it? You win and lose all at the same time. So, you know, <laughs> I think that's quite funny. But um, but yeah. So to me, I think you know. But war gaming is a very social hobby, um, and I think that's one of the biggest traits that we have. Um, so for, on a personal note, a like for me that might be different that's already been said. Uh, it's got to be creating games for somebody or putting on a game for somebody uh, or a group of people, anybody. I'd spend, you know, once I've come up with the idea, or you know, we, Mel and I and Jamie, we've all thrashed out the idea of what it's going to be. Having that surprise element of what the game's going to be, or even if the person knows that they, he's, that they he or she's building forces up for a particular game, but they won't know how the game's going to look. They don't know how the table's going to look. In seeing their faces when they come into the gaming room and they see it all lit up and they see the table, this, that, and the other, and it's just that sort of receiving a present on Christmas morning and you unwrap it and the look and, and you just think yeah that's it and that's what I like that that moment of yes you, you you're, you're appreciating what what work's gone in etc um, so so for me that that has got to be one of the biggest and I take a lot from the hobby from that um, but um, yeah no that's it I think really I don't you know I don't think I can think of anything else really that's not already been said so so there we are so what we're here for today then we're here for the british expeditionary force so as you can see in front of you you've got uh, this is what i've got so far i have got another uh box of 10 man as a semi-section bolt action figures 
uh, to add into this. Um, they are they are going to be a part of the support element at the back, which I have options I can choose from for chain of command. But um, I, I say that that's what that's going to be. The reason for building this force was Operation Sea Lion came out from Bolt Action, and I love the concept. I've got both of the books. I love the concept of that. And I think that could be really interesting. Um, and it sort of plays on that. What I do quite like is the very British Civil War, 1930s, 1938. And I quite like that idea. Um, but so the Operation Sea Line was just that like, next step on. I thought that could be really good. I quite fancy getting some narrative into that. So I thought, well, I'll get the BEF done. I've got the Dad's Army figures already painted up and done. I play games with those anyway. Um, so I said to Jamie, get these done. And as we were doing this, oh, I said not as we were doing this, but as we the ideas were coming forward about doing this, uh, Chain of Command or Two Fat Lardies released their Blitzkrieg uh, supplement for, for um, Chain of Command. So this now is going to be doubled up to be able to play both game systems, uh, which is great, really, because obviously you multi rolled for your figures and that, which is brilliant. Um, so British, um, I've got. Uh, for, for mainly, I've, as you see it now, would be for chain of command setup, but obviously bolt action, it's the same sort of setups really. So in the front here, we've got um, an officer. The medic would be a support choice. Um, I'll just show you the medic. The medic would be a support choice. Um, he wouldn't be in there in, in chain of command. So you would have your officer and your sergeant. Um, in fact, the sergeant should have a rifle, really, not a pistol, but I quite like that figure as a sergeant. He looked, looked quite quite different. I am going to do a Ste here. Ste from 1.HQ, he's redone really, really his Winter Germans recently. He's done a great job on him, actually. Um, and, he, and it all started off by doing one thing, and one thing led to another. And, uh, and he had repainted his flesh, he was telling me. And I thought, do you know what? After seeing what he'd done with his Germans, I'm going to do the same with these ones. So, Steve, mate, yeah, I have took some inspiration from you, bud. <laughs> right, so there, that's, that's the HQ. And, uh, okay, I have to be careful on this. I've got this camera balanced precariously here. There we are. Here's the first section of troops. Uh, obviously, NCO, uh, you've got the Bren gunner there, and obviously you've got your eight uh, rifle to men. Obviously, they're broken down into, into groups. Uh, you have a Bren section team, and then you'll have your rifle team and chain of command. But with bolt action, it's all sort of 10 men. So that's why I'm sort of showing you it, so it can be used as both. Um, there we are, let's have a look. Uh, over the back, behind those, there's the second section there. Again, Bren team, NCO, rifleman. And here is the third. Third team section, there we are. Again, exactly the same. Ten man section there. Their support elements for the platoon, uh, basic support elements, there's a two inch mortar there to the right and a anti tank rifle team to there, over there. Now, in chain of command, you don't get a crew for the, chain of the anti tank rifle team. You have to take out a man or men from your sections to be able to crew the gun, but just showing you there for, for aesthetics. So at the back there, you'll see we've got a sniper team. Those I really like. So if I can get one of them forward for you, so you can sort of see it. I do like those figures. That one, and I'll get this one here for you. Oh, use fingers. There, okay. So that's those there. And then we have, I've got two Vickers machine guns. And again, I bought two box sets. I don't know the reason why, but I did just come in the set. Well, actually, I think I got the support pack. That's why I got the other gun. Um, and then next to that, I've got a three inch mortar spotter next to that. So again, in chain of command, you wouldn't have the mortar on the table, but you would have the spotting team. So again, for bolt action, I've got the gun. For uh, chain of command, you don't need it. I've got another two inch mortar team there. Again, great for laying smoke and that down in chain of command. So well worth having. And two pounder, one of my favorite guns of the early part of the war, along with the uh, 37. I do like the German 37 as well. And next to them, I've got a spare uh, anti-tank rifle team 
So again, you can sort of mix and max with quite a bit of stuff there. Like I said, and in the back of the support options would be another 10 man section, uh, which I could bring out for chain of command, or I could add a fourth section in for bolt action, that four sections, but, um, but there we are, that's that. So let's just spin that back round. So that's it, that's my BEF figures. Um, so something a little bit different for me to show you. Um, obviously with D-Day uh, 76th anniversary a couple of days ago, um, I posted on the On Point HQ uh, Facebook page um, our D-Day game we did last year commemorating the uh, 75th anniversary. Um, I'm sort of doing it at the moment because obviously with works being absolutely manic ever since the coronavirus has kicked off um gaming wise has been 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 very short and few and far between so i've been sort of taking a trip back down memory lane looking at the sort of games that i've done in the past and we've put on in the past and i'm sort of sort of periodically posting them onto onto steve's channel there uh, so i'll leave a link in the description below to, to the on point hq's channel and obviously to our d-day game if you're interested um, so without further ado, thanks for watching and thank you to all the new subscribers. Uh, much appreciated and all your, you know, you've seen something you've liked and you've enjoyed and uh, hopefully we can continue doing, and doing that for you guys. And um, until next time, please take care, stay safe and happy wargaming.